Hi, and good evening from the Universal Parking Garage. So, I am at Universal tonight, and I'm gonna be going, hopefully, to both Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure, just to have a night at both parks. I really wanna catch Universal Superstar Parade for a particular reason, which I'll get to that probably a little bit later. Let's head into CityWalk. Of course, I parked all the way in the Jaws section of the parking garage, and I have about 15 minutes to make it into the park before the Superstar Parade, so hopefully I make it in time. Okay, so I made it through security. I'm heading into the park. It looks like the sign is still down over here, the entrance of City Walk. So I'm heading over to Universal Studios. I'm trying to think of interesting places to go to dinner tonight. I really wanted to try the, uh, the, the, the cafe, the comic strip cafe over in Islands of Adventure, but I did want to do that with Brennan. All right, I think I made it with plenty of time. The parade steps off and it actually goes around Universal counterclockwise. Interestingly, so I should definitely see it. This is my first time back since Mardi Gras has concluded, so it should just be a regular average day at Universal. And how is that for timing? It is literally five o'clock right now. I don't know if you can see that, but the, the parade time fluctuates very often. This is the earliest that I remember it ever being. All right, I'm inside the park. The parade should be stepping off down Hollywood Boulevard. I think I'm gonna head towards it just to see it coming towards me. It's a pretty quiet day at Universal, at least right now I'm getting here at around five o'clock. Which is pretty nice. This has not changed at all. But this nod to what used to be Shrek 4D. Alright, so I made it to the end of the street, and sure enough, way down there, I can see the Superstar Parade turn in the corner. Okay, so I'm heading into New York right now, and I was totally considering going to the Monsters Cafe for dinner tonight, but it's closed. So I'll probably have to think of something else as I head down the street to probably watch the parade from down there. Okay, we're over to the Mummy to watch it from over here because there aren't a lot of people there right now. This seems like a pretty good spot because the parade is here and there's nobody else. Where I'm standing, there's the lead float for the minion unit. Here come all of the minion dancers right now, followed by the main minion float. I don't see Gru right now. Oh no, where's Gru? Interesting, okay. Hello! <laughs> I feel a little awkward, I'm just standing by myself. And of course there's the vector in his spaceship vehicle. Cool. And then of course Patrick. Patrick is the first unit, it looks like, in the Spongebob parade unit here. Look at all these fish. Hello! And of course, Spongebob himself in front of his house. Cool. Jellyfish fields and Gary at the top up there. And of course, some fish. And then there's Squidward himself. The very final float in the Spongebob unit. Hi, Squidward! And then of course, some coral. Hello. It's pretty bright today. And then there's the Secret Life of Pets unit, the first floats. There's Max the dog. And then the, the larger one whose name I totally forgot. And then the dancers whose pants I'm jealous of. Look how comfortable that looks. And then the main Secret Life of Pets unit floats. All the other little animals on here in the city of New York. Passing through the streets of New York. Look at that. The Brooklyn Bridge up there, I never really noticed that. And of course, the Dora the Explorer dancers here in front of the Dora floats. And there's Dora, the very final floats in the Superstar Parade. Thanks everyone for joining there's a monkey, the Dora Diego, and then the leopard. Uh, I think the kitty. Cool. That was the Superstar Parade. Okay, there's the parade turning the corner over there, and I'm over by the Revenge of the Mummy. It is just so quiet over here. I've never seen it like this. So the construction walls for Revenge of the Mummy have been moved all the way back to the attraction's entrance right here. They have a bunch of movie posters here, including the original 1999 The Mummy poster. And there's this that says, The Museum of Antiquities Revenge of the Mummy is currently closed for scheduled maintenance. Reopening late summer 2022, so that is interesting. You can still go into the Sahara Traders gift shop right there, but now the entrance is right here. I and mean, something I've never noticed way over there in Sting Alley, I don't think I've ever noticed that water tower before. Just so much can be appreciated about the New York section of Universal Studios just by looking up. It's really interesting to see it this quiet over by Revenge of the Mummy. It will never be this quiet again once it reopens, without a doubt, because this is a very popular attraction to ride. I'm curious to see when this does reopen and if any changes are actually going on inside. Okay, so I'm stepping into Sting Alley right now to consider my dining options for dinner tonight. There's that water tower up there. I guess I checked and over to Islands of Adventure, the comic strip cafe is currently closed. Okay, so the operating days and hours of a lot of restaurants around Universal seem to be a little all over the place depending on what 
day that it is of the week and time of day that it is, so I don't know. I'll probably just happen upon a restaurant. I'm gonna try to hold out until I go to Islands of Adventure a little bit later on tonight. So. Okay, so I just came around the corner and I think I'm going to backtrack in the direction that I came from back over there to keep heading around Universal. It's pretty cool they have the fire hydrant turned on. Yes, because it's very hot. Currently, they sort of sprang into the street of New York. Of course, at the end of the street of by Transformers, this will always be one of my most favorite locations in any theme park, just this particular street in general. Okay, I'm heading back down the street and then around the corner. I'm just so impressed and captivated by the attention to detail just in this area in particular compared to all the other theme park lands and areas. Mostly just the fire escapes and the design and architecture of the buildings and speaking of architecture there are construction walls outside of Louis. It's still open though, I did check it on the app. It looks like the walls are just up around this quick service outdoor window here, so I wonder if they're just improving that. Hopefully, that would be awesome. I thought about going to Louis, but I want something a little bit special if I can hold out for it, hopefully. Right across from Fast Fury Supercharged is this food truck here with the Nashville hot chicken macaroni and cheese. Very tempted, but I think I'm gonna pass this up. So one location that I'm never tempted to go to is Richter's Burgers because they should just have burgers here, but I did check the menu. It's actually some interesting burgers, so I think I might go inside and just see. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to commit to a burger in here, but I don't believe I've ever really walked around and just kind of take it in the details of this restaurant. This really makes me miss working at Disaster, which previously was an earthquake right across the streets. Hopefully one day I can come back and eat here and then even eat up stairs there. There's a second level up there which would be really awesome to sit there and overlook the lagoon. But I guess I'm gonna go ahead and head on out and try to find somewhere else to eat. So maybe one day I'll try to come back around lunchtime and, and I might eventually get this one here. That burger looks awesome. They also have one just called The Big One, which is their juiciest burger. I also want to come back to Shea Alcatraz and get the, I believe it's the Shark Attack beverage that is pretty particularly specific to Shea Alcatraz. Sounds like a fun drink. Right now it's a 45 minute wait for the Hogwarts Express to take that over two islands of adventure, but I think I'm just going to walk. Okay, so I've changed my mind and my plans a thousand times. I'm actually heading into Diagon Alley. I placed a mobile order at the Leaky Cauldron. I looked ahead at a lot of the options available over at Islands of Adventure, and they weren't incredibly impressive, so I'm having dinner here. All right, so I'm inside the Leaky Cauldron, and I was able to choose my own table here. So I just put in the, uh, the table number onto the app here, and they should be bringing my food here. Hopefully relatively quickly. Okay, so I ended up getting somewhat of a small entree option here. This is the mini pie combination, which is a mini cottage pie and a mini fisherman's pie served with a garden salad. And I got some blue cheese dressing there. So I still might get some food or maybe a dessert over in Islands of Adventure. Okay, so I turned both of my pies upside down so you can sort of see what's going on with both of those and what's in them. But then also, I brought this from home, this Coca-Cola, which is somewhat taboo because Coca-Cola is not sold in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So this is kind of exciting. All right, so I'm done with my assortment of pies. It is pretty quiet right now for it being dinner time. And I sat all the way down at the very end of the row, down there next to the door. I love it inside for the Kikalti. I have a similar appreciation to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, obviously, like I do over in New York. Oh, I did not know if you saw that the sun is absolutely in the way, but just the attention to detail, in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, both in Diagon Alley and over at Cogsby, they're just, they're incomparable, honestly. It looks very pretty right now, even though it's very backward. Okay, so I think I'm heading out of Diagon Alley now to continue my lap around Universal Studios, and then I will head over to Islands of Adventure, where I will hopefully get some sort of a, a treat, maybe. Passing by number 12, Grimmel Place, and it's hard to see, but creatures up there in the window, just peeking out at everybody who's walking around in front of his house. It's incredible how much space really opens up once all of the food booths are gone for the various events that they have at Universal throughout the year. Wanted to go up to the second level of Richter's made me remind myself of the time that myself and Brennan got to go up to the second level of Lombard's. That was a lot of fun to get to do that in the past. Didn't get to eat it there, but I got to go up and, and explore. And then also get to go up here to that like, I guess it's like the third level of Simpsons up there. Just any aerial theme park view. I love it. Doing the carnival games in Animal Kingdom the other day and actually being successful at it has given me a, a sense of confidence when it comes to carnival games. But I need to bring my uh, my game pass back so I can play these games and, and use that pass that I got from Horror Nights several months ago. Okay, I'm very glad that I ended up getting what I got over 
in Diagon Alley because most of the kick I was going to have to stop at either Fast Food Boulevard or, or to some location over at Islands that I wasn't really feeling, which makes me sound like a picky eater, which I am not a picky eater, so I'm glad that I actually got something that I really wanted. I'm very pleased with the crowd levels today. Like, this has been the most manageable it's been at the theme park in a long time. So this is sort of interesting, this pathway over here that would connect Kid Zone to uh, Hollywood Boulevard is closed, so everyone is being redirected into Central Park. So that's the walkway to Kid Zone. The background music randomly turned off for whatever reason, which is a little bit weird, but... Look at this. There's just a massive fence. And then the walkway over to... Oh, there's the music. Uh, Hollywood Boulevard is right there. It is interesting to see this area just used right now, because it's normally a very quiet part of the park. So I've almost completed my lap around Universal Studios, so I'm heading over to Islands of Adventure, hopefully by the time that it gets dark probably within the hour or so I'm trying to decide what particular dessert or a snack that I want to get for myself over at Islands of Adventure. There are a lot of options. So there's Hollywood Boulevard right over there and I sort of exited a little bit earlier. That's where I just walked across the grass because this is the other side of the construction walls right over here. All right, there's Transformers right over there and then Rip Red Rockets behind it and, and here's a sign and I'm back on Hollywood Boulevard. I was trying to think about places that I don't normally eat at and Mel's is definitely one of them so I was considering this earlier but I wanted something a little bit different than a burger. The detail of Hollywood Boulevard I'm sure is accurate but it's not as striking or resonating as, as New York is and definitely not Harry Potter. I mean it's impressive and beautiful but just the detail I suppose over in New York and the Wizarding World is just a little bit more prevalent, probably. The Brownwood Derby, though, is definitely pretty impressive, which next to that are some construction walls. This was the Shrek queue, which looks like all of the Shrek paraphernalia back there has been taken down. I do wonder if this is going to be utilized for a Halloween Horror Nights house this year, if that's what they're waiting for with all of the construction. They're going to use it one more time and then start demolition, or maybe not at all. I don't know. But like I said, though, right now I'm heading over to Islands of Adventure to get myself a snack, perhaps, ride a ride. I've been keeping an eye on the Harry Potter rides over there. I don't know if I've ever really paid attention to this mural up here above the Universal Studios store. I'm presuming that it's references to infamous movies, but I don't know what any of those are. Yep, I have absolutely no idea if any of those paintings are referencing any particular movie or cinematic moment whatsoever. But I'm heading out. Farewell, Universal. I have a little less than two hours until Islands of Adventure closes, so hopefully I can utilize that time well. Interesting, it looks like the Universal globe isn't spinning straight ahead. That happens sometimes. I don't know if it's on purpose or that's just what ends up happening. So before I forget, earlier I mentioned the Universal Superstar Parade, and I said that I was going to talk about it a little bit later. There's not really much to talk about, but I wanted to come see it today because it's rumored that it's going to be closing at some point relatively soon. And myself and Brennan and my family have plans throughout the rest of this month for my 30th birthday. So I wanted to make sure that I made it out to Universal to try to see it one more time before it inevitably potentially goes away. There's, there hasn't been like a confirmation that it's going to be going away. I don't know, but I wanted to come watch it regardless because it's a fun parade. It may not be accurate whatsoever, but I suppose we'll find out that parade is 10 years old, so it's probably about time for it to be updated, at least. I don't know what this about the Islands of Adventure entry music, but just whenever that mysterious, pleasant theme starts to play, I always get so hyped and excited to go into Islands of Adventure. It is starting to get dark, but the sun is still up. I don't know if I'm going to be riding a ride or prioritizing get, getting some sort of a treat or a snack first, but I'll find out. I don't know why I started talking about just theme park design and, and detail, but Literally the entirety of Port of Entry is just perfect architecturally. I probably say this consistently, but the amount of detail that is just impossible to even notice because there's so much going on in Port of Entry. It's just so impressive. And it's so much fun just to walk through and just aesthetically appreciate. There are so many details and it sounds that I've never noticed before. One of them being this up here, this monkey. This lucky monkey. Hold on, I'm gonna try to back up a little bit. I've never noticed that there are die in those cages that that monkey is cranking and turning over consistently. There's so many moving pieces too to this area. I don't intend this to turn into a things that I've never noticed about Port of Entry and Islands of Adventure type of a narrative, but I could very easily indulge in that sort of a concept because there really is just so much about Port of Entry to just appreciate. Alright, so I'm heading into Seuss Landing to start my lap around the park. 
I believe, and hopefully end up in the Wizarding World to maybe grab a little desserts, maybe do single rider for Velocicoaster. It has been a little bit since I've done that. All right, so this is quite extensive. The remaining arch of Seuss Landing has been taken down, and then a massive construction wall has been built around If I Ran the Zoo and Carousel Cell. I guess it's technically separate construction walls that are around If I Ran the Zoo and the Carousel Cell. I have a couple signs here. Please visit our other kids' play areas at Camp Jurassic and be shipped the olive. We'll pick up this mess. We'll pick it up fast. Please pardon our dust. It's sure not to last. Okay. So we'll see what happens with If I Ran the Zoo, I guess. I wanted to walk around the corner just real quick, still at the entrance of Seuss Landing, just to see the extent of the walls, and they really do legitimately go all around If I Ran the Zoo. That's interesting. I wonder if it's going to close. This was deemed to be allegedly problematic with the Dr. Seuss company ceasing to publish a few of Dr. Seuss's books with certain references that are inappropriate. These walls are no joke though. This is pretty extensive and this ride has been closed for sort of a long time. Okay, so remember by One Fish, Two Fish. I feel obligated to show this off because I randomly filmed hanging photos over at Universal Studios Florida. But continuing over to the Wizarding World to hopefully get my snack. Wow, these construction walls just wrap all the way around. Which, like, I feel that I already knew that because I've been here when this has been under construction, but was it always just that much? Did it always wrap around the entirety of... Maybe just because of if I ran the zoo, it just feels like so much more is going on than what has been going on recently. I don't think I could walk through here last time, so at least I can walk through the, uh, the street of the lifted Lorax, through the truffle tree forest here. Right now, the weather, by the way, feels incredible. It was so hot earlier today, but right now it feels great. So earlier when I was trying to decide where to have dinner, this was one of the locations that I was wanting to eat at because I don't know if I've ever eaten in there, but it's currently closed. A lot of locations are only open for lunch, and then other places just aren't open at all for some reason. Even though, in particular, I know the, uh, I'm mesmerized by this, the, uh, the comic strip cafe has been open. I don't know why it's closed today. This is another reference that I don't know if they're going to do away with if I ran the zoo. If they're going to be keeping this around to just any general reference that just may be potentially insensitive. I would think that they would want to uh, change it, probably. At the same time, nothing is really insensitive about Universal or Universal's references to these particular books. If anything, it would just be Universal just trying to be consistent and accommodating. Okay, so I decided because it's been a little while since I've been down here behind the side in pretty much since Velocity Ghost has been open. I want to go see it from way down over there to see what it looks like once it's actually running and operating. And then I might actually hop in line for a single rider. It's sad because theme parks don't seem to have these types of areas much anymore. Just these extensive areas to walk around and explore. And this is my favorite aspect of certain parts of the park, and especially of Islands of Adventure. So this is pretty interesting. It looks like they just added some outdoor seating over here. I don't know if this is for Nithos in particular. They just added this for just recreational use, I imagine, and it's probably for Mythos. All right, I'm waiting for the Velocicoaster, which should be coming by in just a second. I think I hear it. There it is. So I it begins the sunset, so I've pretty much convinced myself that I'm definitely going to be doing the single rider for Velocicoaster, which sounds incredible right now, and I still have not yet had a nighttime ride on this. And I didn't even plan it, but I'm even wearing my Jurassic Park t-shirt, so this was meant to happen, right? So I'm going to get a treat, probably over in Hogsmeade, maybe, or the Lost Continent, and then head over to Velocicoaster. So I was looking at the menu for the Fire Eaters Grill, which I believe just closed. I think they did have some some snacks potentially, but I'm gonna get that during an next trip because they literally just closed. Right there, that is the Fire Eaters Grill. And I don't know if it's open, probably not. If the app is accurate, yep, it is closed unfortunately, which is fine because it is always nice to have an excuse to come back and try new stuff, right? And now heading into Hogsmeade. The sun has almost set. This is a beautiful time to walk into the village right now. I think I'm heading inside Honey Boots. There's bound to be some sort of a treat in here that I've yet to try. So, I guess we'll see. Can I go in here? I think I can. Right? Yes. There's actually quite a long line in here, but I think I saw something that I'm going to want up there at the register. Okay, so there are a lot of different choices here. I've never had a pumpkin pasty 
So I might try to get more books. If not, I don't have any more, but I might get a pumpkin cake because it doesn't look like cavity. So we'll see. All right, they totally had pumpkin pasties. I guess they had more in the back. So I got myself a pumpkin pasty now to try to find a place to eat it. I'm going to see if I can go around the other side of the three broomsticks. Maybe go to one of the tables back there. It's almost dark, finally. Yep, it looks like there are plenty of seats back over here, so I'm just going to find one and enjoy my little pastry. All right, so it's a little bit small, and it was $6, but there's my pumpkin pasty. I'm about to go ahead and get in line for a lot of coaster here in just a minute. Hopefully get my first ever legitimate nighttime ride on the Blast Coaster. I really hope this is good. This was kind of expensive for like the size that it is. All right, so I came inside the three broomsticks to head back out into Hogsmeade. Honestly, that was disappointing, but it wasn't bad. It was just very small for what it cost, and I finished it about three bites. And it was like pumpkin filling, but only in the very middle of the pastry. So hopefully I can do single liner for a lot of coaster. There's no guarantee that it's actually going to be open. But I might get lucky, you never know. I still want to come back with Brennan because I've really been wanting to do just like a little date night at Universal or Islands of Adventure just to ride a ton of rides and eat some dinner and have some drinks. This is interesting, this is the backup for the Nighttime Lights show. So this is hopefully going to be my connecting route to get to Jurassic Park. I think this is the first show of the night, which is why it's so incredibly busy. But thankfully I have alternative plans. And I made it to Jurassic Park. Looks like only one side of the arch wants to be lit right now, which is okay. It's like that sometimes. And several confused and inconvenienced people later, I've made it over to Velocicoaster. It looks like the single water line is currently closed, but that may open up. It generally does. It, 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 it pulses whenever they keep it closed versus when they decided to open it up. Okay, so I've been waiting for a little bit. The park closes in 15 minutes, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get in line the regular line because I think the Hogwarts show just included. I decided to go and get into the regular line because after the castle show, there probably will be like a, a crowd and I'm coming from Hogsmeade. I'm excited. Okay, we can move the line relatively quickly. It is pretty much 9 o'clock in the docks right now, so I think the park is closed. All right, I just got off of the Velocicoaster. It was supposed to be a 30 minute wait, and that's exactly what it ended up being. It looks like the finale, more or less, probably, for the cinematic celebrations going on over at Universal Studios. That's pretty cool, but that was a legitimate time to ride. The park is now closed, so now I just need to make the long trip back to the parking garage, all the way back to my car. That was honestly such a cool experience. I want to come back with Vernon so we can do it together. It was so fun. It was a little bit hard just cognitively to assess what was happening. My, my internal, um, what do you call that? Like where your equilibrium, yeah, that word. I don't know. It was, uh, it, it was, it was, it was something else, but it was fun. I was thinking about coming to Camp Jurassic because this is also an incredible experience at night. But I'm glad that I ended up riding the Velocicoaster. Just getting to do that at night. That's something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, and I finally did it. Rain of Kong is also a pretty terrifying ride to ride at night, only due to the outdoor section, obviously, but it is it is a lot more fun at night. It's pretty quiet heading out of the park right now, and it only closed, like, I guess it almost closed about half an hour ago now at this point. So in Toon Lagoon, by the way, that sandwich looks pretty delicious. Somebody should recreate that sometime. There are more walls over here. What is going on? And there's still no, uh, quotation and thought bubbles on the trees. This is pretty interesting. Look at this. There's so many walls all over the place. And there's the Comic Strip Cafe, which I really wanted that dinner at tonight. I swear that this was open in one of the last times that I was here. And look at this. The walls just go around the entirety of the store here. I'm sure they're just doing some like refurbishment work back there, but it's pretty interesting to see just so many walls all over the place. Walking through an almost empty Marvel Superhero Island which, after seeing Multiverse of Madness, just all of these characters and their potential relevance to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and just the stories that they could tell is pretty overwhelming. Look at all of these characters that are referenced here that Disney is not able to use, unfortunately, in their theme parks. But nonetheless, they do make some pretty good movies. It's been a little bit since I've done The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, so 
It'll be fun to uh, come back and do this at some point again, hopefully soon. But as for now, I'm heading out of the park. Oh, that's pretty nice lighting. There have been very few times where I've left the park after the Hulk has finished running and cycling for the day, so this is a little bit weird. It's just so quiet right now. Of course, I had to park in the farthest garage in the farthest section of the bottommost level of that garage, but I still had a great day today with a lot of surprises. Sometimes it's just fun to come here without any particular plans or agenda and just have a good time. Plus, just being here at night compared to being here in the middle of the day is just a very different experience. And then I cannot understate how nice the weather feels right now, which is somewhat surprising because it's getting hot again. It's a little bit of a crowd heading back through City Walk to the parking garage, but it's not terrible. There's a few more people as the parks sort of converge from Universal and Islands of Adventure. This can happen sometimes whenever the parks close at the same time versus being more staggered. It might be a little bit of a trek to make it back to the car, but again, today was definitely worth it. I had such a nice time. And I did it. I made it back to the garage, all the way back to the bottommost level, and I'm heading back to the car. All right, so I'm almost back to my car. That was my trip to Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure originally, just to see the Superstar Parade, which may or may not be going away later on in the summer, but it was nice to see it nonetheless. And then grabbing some dinner, which I inevitably finally got from the Leaky Cauldron, which was delicious, and then getting some dessert over at Islands of Adventure from Honeydukes, and then just getting to walk around both parks and just seeing what's being improved and refurbished and what's different, and then getting to ride Velocicoaster at night, even wearing my Jurassic Park t-shirt, which again was not planned, but was a very pleasant surprise, and just riding at night, that was just, that was very special and just so much fun. Um, but I appreciate you hanging out with me. I will see you soon. Have a great day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.